Hi everyone, my name is Marinko Spasovic and in this video I'll show you how to use serial log in ASP.NET Core Web API to create structured logs and provide more readable information using different outputs like console, file and database. As usual, if you like the video, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. It helps the channel a lot and supports my work here as well. That said, let's move on. To start, I already have a web API application created. And the first thing I will do here is install serial log. So let's use the install package command and then add the name of the package. This will install the core serial log bits, a few default syncs and some code tailored for ASP.NET Core. Next, I have to configure serial log. You can use either the app settings file to configure the logger from the configuration file, of course, or you can use the fluent method approach to do the same. I like doing that with the second approach, but don't like having everything inside the program class. So I will create a new class and name it application extension. It will be a static class because I will create an extension method here. And let's add a first static extension method named configure serialog. And I will extend the iHostBuilder interface with the host parameter. Inside the method, I will use the host parameter and call the useSerialog method to set the serialog as the logger provider. This method accepts an action delegate as a parameter with two parameters for host builder context and logger configuration. And I will use the logger configuration one to call the write to property and the console method to state that I want to log my messages to the console. For now, this is all I need. At this point, I would like to let you know about our ultimate ASP.NET Core Web API book that you can use to master all the best practices to create powerful production ready web APIs. Also, check out our Blazor course to create client C -sharp apps without using JavaScript. The links are in the description below. Now, let's continue and open the program class and cut all of the code first. Then I will add the try catch finally block here to ensure any configuration issues are appropriately logged. And finally, paste all the code inside the try block. With this done, I can simply register my extension method. Now, this is only one stage of the registration where I redirect all logs events through our serial log pipeline. But we also want to configure serial log immediately when the application starts. This has the benefit of catching and reporting exceptions shown during the setup of the ASP.NET Core host. To do that, I will call the log class from serial log and then the logger property and instantiate here a new logger configuration class that I can use for the global configuration. Then I will simply call again the write to property and the console method and finally call the create logger method to create a logger. Now using this logger, I can log some information inside the try block like starting a web application. Also, now I can log any exceptions inside the catch block using the log.fatal method and provide the exception first and then the message I want to log. Also, inside the final block, I can do some cleanup by removing the remaining configuration from the default logger. That's it. Now, if I run the app, we can see an initial log from our global logger and then all the other logs regarding different requests. Here, serial log captures the logging omitted by the internals of the application and outputs it to the console. Okay, so far, we've only seen the default log events being output to the console window. But now, let's see how we can add custom log events. Let's open the controller class. And here, I will first create a private read only field of the iLogger log controller type named logger. 
I will also use the constructor to initialize the field. Now, in the get method, I will use the logger field and call the log information method to log some information to the console. You can see I am logging a string with some anonymous object with the name property. So, let's test this as well. Let's send a request from Swagger. And now, if I check the logs, I can see a regular log message here. You can see it is an info log in the regular string format. Great. Now, let's see what other things we can use. A great tool to view structured logs is SEC. There is a free version that we can install on local machines and you can download it from here. We have to download it, install it and set it up by running the program. Of course, you have to provide a username and password for your account. I already have it installed and now let's install the serial log sync. With the package installed, I can simply modify the configuration. So let's use the login configuration parameter and use the write to property with the sec method and simply provide the server URL address. Now let's navigate to that address and run the app. Send the request and revisit the sec page. You can see all the logs here, but also we can inspect every single log. So, for example, let's click on the custom one and you can see all the individual structure attributes. Finally, we can even search here if we want. For example, if we add our search term here, we can see how easily we can search through our logs. Okay, with this one done, we can look at another useful sync to configure, the file sync. To set up the file sync, we just need to install the package. Once it is installed, I have to change my configuration. Here, I can set up a lot of other configurations for the file, like the level of logs, output template, size and bytes for each file, rolling interval, etc. But for now, I will leave it as is. Now, I can run the app and send the request and then we can see a new file here with the logged content. Of course, if you want to see logs in a JSON format, all I have to do is use a different overload of the file method with the format provided first, in this case JSON formatter class. Now, I can repeat the testing process all over again. And there we go. We have JSON formatted logs. The last sync I will show here is the SQL Server sync. This can be useful if you want to query and analyze your log data using SQL or the associated tools. To set up logging with the SQL Server, as you can guess, we just need to install a new sync. Now, I need to update my configuration. So again, I will use the write to property, but this time call the MSSQL server method where I need to provide the connection string. I will hard code it here just for the example sake, and then I need sync options. Here I need the table name as logs, the scheme name as DBO, and also I want the database to be created as well as the logs table as soon as the app starts. Of course, if they don't already exist. As with previous syncs configuration, a lot more customization can be done here as well. Now, let's simply repeat the entire testing process. And once the testing is done, I can see that I have all the logs in the database table. Awesome. So, in this video, we've looked how easy it is to get a structured logging setup with serial log in ASP.NET Core Web API. Due to the great syncs developed by the community, we've seen how easy it is to configure additional syncs. Problems can and will happen when we release our software to the wild. So, it's imperative we have all kinds of information and metrics available at hand. 
logging being often the final source of truth when other tools don't give us the answers we need. That said, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons and the bell button to receive notifications of my future videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again in the next one. Until then, all the best.